Welcome into the show tonight. I'm Brian Keating alongside Eddie Radosevich back on uh, Crashing the Boards, my man. Welcome back. What's happening? It's good to be here. Football season. I, I know. I love it. It's here. We're right in the middle of it. Uh, Sooners and Cowboys, both big winners on, on Saturday. We'll get to that. There's a lot of kind of moving and shaking. Sure. Eddie, let's start with the game in Norman and uh, Oklahoma didn't play their best football, certainly in the first half of that one. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what OU fans were sitting there watching. Like, what is this? And then that, that was kind of the play that set it off right before the half. And then they were outstanding in the second half. They win this thing 33-3. to We'll get to the breakdown in just a second. I, wanna, I just want to fast forward because all the news. So here's what's coming up next. We'll get to the OU stuff. They're playing Nebraska next week. Man, it's going to be weird. Scott Frost gets fired today. And so we were going to have all this nostalgia and OU Nebraska and Scott Frost kind of hanging on to his job. And can can he kind of mount one last thing? So sure. with everything in mind, that's what's coming up. Now I'll throw it back to you. I'll kind of give you the floor. Scott Frost is the story today. Oklahoma didn't play their best. How are we looking as, as we go out of the Kent State game and into Nebraska? Yeah, you know, I, it's it's scary, I, I guess, in a, in a way, just because I think it is kind of like a program game. I think if there's going to be a point where Nebraska is going to rally around the troops, this will be it. Yeah. But, I mean, there's some pretty obvious weaknesses there. Obviously, what they did over across seas against Northwestern. Uh, <laughs> they lost which, to Georgia which, Southern. Which wasn't Eddie. good. They gave up almost 700 yards, the most yards in Memorial, or third most yards in Memorial Stadium history yesterday. So, Nebraska's not a good football no. team. Don't get me wrong. No. But if there was a game that you figured that they were going to rally, and I kind of figured that maybe they would do this, but rallying for a head coach I'm, that's in place, uh, yeah. and now it's an interim coach, and, you know, I guess he's the lucky one. He get, he walks away with the full buyout, $15 million. I thought they were going to wait until October 1st, but, I mean, they obviously, Trev Alberts and the Chancellor, they had to do something because that program is, I mean, we thought it was dead at the beginning of the year. It's deader it than dead deader now. Than Two dead. losses already into the season. All right, I'll give you a chance with the boards here. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is over the first two games for Oklahoma. Let's just go foundation setters. Yeah. I think that defensively Oklahoma has been really good. Uh, first time since 2013 that they've gone a two game span of allowing just one touchdown, nine sacks, 23 tackles for loss. There's a lot of moments where you go, yeah, that's why you hired Brent Venables, mm -hmm. Danny Stussman, Billy Bowman. Those are guys that you can build the defense around here for the years to come in Norman. Uh, but yeah, the first couple of, uh, series on Saturday or the first half really before the Marvin Mims touchdown uh, there were the, the natives were restless <laughs> in the stands uh, Jeff Levy he's indoctrinated now he's now an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma yeah. people call him for his we, job we, we didn't we didn't score 31 in the first half what are we doing here yeah, you know exactly. we're starting to fire people now I look I, I you said the name for me it was marvelous Marvin Mims that's what Toby Rowland always says on he's the call. back yeah, um, yeah that, that's an enormous development for me. Not sure what happened last year. It just something didn't click sure. with uh, Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams, but he's got a heck of a combination now with Dylan Gabriel. And, and that deep ball threat is certainly the one you saw in the second half. You just go, okay, now yeah. th this is the explosive freshman out of Texas we thought we were getting and we saw when he was a freshman. So that, to me, offensively, they got to run it a little bit more consistently. They've, they've got to figure out something with the offensive line. I mean, through two games, it's just the left side has kind of not been what they wanted. Right. They're going to get one game more as fast as it's expected in uh, Lincoln. He's been out for the first two games. That flips Anton Harrison back over to the left side. Wanya fits into the right side. So maybe that can cure some things on that side of the football. But I mean, they, they just haven't been able to run the ball early in games. I think Marcus Major needs to get a look, couple more carries I, as well. I do, too. The, the move that he made uh, on the touchdown yeah. was, was special. I don't know if DeMarco Murray was happy about it. <laughs> I think he gave him a little earful on the sidelines. But he's been really good. And, you know, I still think there's a way for Eric Gray to fit into this offense. Yep. And particularly going against the Nebraska defense that I don't think features a lot of speed. Is that game going to be close? I mean, you would think The 14-point so. spread. You would think so. A really good team. I Oklahoma, if Oklahoma's going to be a team that can compete for a Big 12 championship, compete for a college football playoff, they go up and win by a couple touchdowns this weekend. And then this kind of starts a four-game stretch here, and I know that's a big sample size in a season, yeah. but I think here in about a month, when you get through Nebraska, you get through that K-State uh, conference opener and then the two DFW trips to TCU and then obviously Texas and the Cotton Bowl, we'll know what this Oklahoma football team is. I think it's going to be close. Every game Nebraska plays is no, close. I mean, I, mean I, I don't, you know, when they play yeah. Ohio State, it's close, and they Absolutely. figure out a way to lose. I just think it's going to be close. It is, and it's, it's a program rallying yeah. kind of kind of game up there in Lincoln this year, or this, this weekend, and it, it'll be interesting. And if nothing else, first road trip, yeah. you don't know yeah. how that yeah. you're going to handle that kind of stuff. 
I think that they feel like they have a good leadership core in place, but it's all talk until you actually go do it. Saturday in Lincoln. I, I, I do think it'll be fun. Let's go to the game on Saturday night in Stillwater where Oklahoma State, you know, Arizona State isn't some great football team, but they do have athletes. You can see when you watch them play the reason they don't win more football games because they do just enough stupid stuff yeah. to, to lose. And they did all of that. It was all on display on Saturday night. But Spencer Sanders was really good again. They've got tons of weapons. We talked about it all summer. And you're just starting to see the Cowboys certainly offensively come together. So they beat Arizona State 34-17. to What did you think of uh, of the Pokes now 2-0? and And this, this was an impressive win, I think, for OSU. Absolutely. Same old, same old. Yeah. And for Oklahoma State, that's a great thing because they've been really good, obviously. You get out of the gates. I think that the 58-44 game a week ago, the score probably doesn't show it was 51 to how well they play yeah. exactly. Although somebody in Stillwater owes me a little bit of money for not covering. <laughs> but it was, it was impressive. And Spencer Sanders has been exactly what you thought he was going to be. He looks comfortable. He looks like a guy that has been starting for, you know, it feels like eight years now up in, uh, up in Stillwater. And, you know, I think the best thing for Oklahoma State offensively is they've Move the ball. They've done really well. They've kind of done it without Brennan Presley. They've done it yeah. without Jaden Bray, obviously. Yeah. Bryson Green was awesome last night. It was uh, Braden Johnson and uh, J.P. Richardson the week before. So I think the best is yet to come, obviously, if they can just shore up some things in the uh, the run game. Dominic Richardson was was starting to come was, was really good in the fourth quarter. I mean, yeah. he closed that game. But for me, it's just what I've seen out of sensational Spencer Sanders sure. through two games. There's just not that many quarterbacks in the country that are better than him. I mean, there's just not. Well, he gets he gets killed for all the turnovers. It was against one team last year, and it was in two games against that, that, That's right. You wipe that away, we're talking about a bunch of different guys. And like I said on the radio this past week, if he played at an Oklahoma or if he played at a Michigan or a big brand-name program, a Heisman guy. he'd be one of those Heisman guys. I hate the week two Heisman you know, talk and all that kind of stuff, but it is just the facts of the matter. He would. He just looks in control of everything. The one thing that concerns me, they're going to have to run the ball more consistently with their sure. running backs, and they did it better. Sure. You, you just can't ask Spencer Sanders to go out there and make because they don't have a great back. They don't, you know, their backup quarterback yeah. situation. So that's going to have to change. But Spencer Sanders has been so good in their weapons. And I think their defense was much better on Saturday night than it was against Central Michigan. They just didn't, they had a couple of busts and that accounted for all 17 points, a couple of big plays. But those young linebackers were better. They were better in the secondary. And when Arizona State had to throw it, they went and killed Emory yeah. Jones. I mean, those, that pass rush is real, and um, and we saw it on Tyler display. Tyler Lacey's turning into an NFL guy before Dad, our eyes. Like, year four now, it's starting to come together a little bit, and you put him alongside Brock Martin or Trace Ford, that's a pretty good defense. Trace Ford front. looked great. Uh, it's good Colin, to see him back after the injuries. No, no question. Colin Oliver had a sack last night. So I just think this is their building – to a football team that I don't know if they can be what they were last year. They're going to be better offensively, sure. probably not, on, but they're going to make some plays defensively. But it, they were it was an impressive win to go do that against Arizona State. Here's what's coming up next for OSU. This should not be some difficult uh, game. You can pray look at, for Arkansas. Yeah, I, I agree. It's going to be the final test, and then they have a bye week, and then they get Baylor, yeah. and, and then it gets real. And then you get into the start of the Big 12, and if you look at the, real. the slate of the conference this weekend, I think it's about wide as open as you can possibly get, or at least as wide wide open as it has been in years. You can make an argument for a lot of teams out there. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the rest Even of the Big the 12. Horns. Even the horns. Okay.